Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. As you can see the camera setup here is a little bit different. Uh, that's because this video is a little something different for you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun, a whole lot of fun today uh, planned. But uh, before I get into the main event for today, uh, I feel like I need to apologize to you guys. Uh, I did not expect to take the last, what is it, nearly three weeks off without any new content. Uh, yes, I did a couple of little montages uh, that I just posted a few days ago. But uh, yeah, uh, apparently I, for the last few weeks I was just completely and totally bereft, devoid of inspiration and motivation to film any YouTube videos, any new YouTube videos. I guess I didn't realize until then that uh, how close I was to actual burnout. I've never been this close to genuine YouTube burnout before. Uh, so yeah, I just, I needed that little break. Um, I'm still not sure what's going to come of, yes, uh, this uh, January was the first time in the history of my channel when I did not upload a Backtracks video during the month for which it was intended. So I, I st I'm still not quite sure. I, I don't want to get rid of Backtracks completely, uh, but we'll get into that later on in another video. But I don't want to waste any time because this video may be a little bit long here. So, but uh, yeah, I'm going to have a whole lot of fun. Apparently I do this with my hands when I'm going to have fun. A uh, little setup here for what I'm about to show you here. A couple weeks ago, a friend of my mother's uh, asked me if I wanted the cassette collection that she and her late husband had accumulated over the last uh, well, 25, 30, 35 years. And of course I said, sure, why not? Um, and I have to appreciate the timing of this because if she had asked me a few months earlier, I wouldn't have had my new cassette deck uh, yet. Well, new to me cassette deck yet and so I would have thought you know cassettes nah get rid of them but yeah uh, the, the timing is everything as they say so uh, today as I filmed this is Saturday morning so Wednesday afternoon we went up to uh, pick up the tapes from her and as you can see in this picture it was quite a little load of them uh, you can see three of the little briefcase style cassette caddy things as well as three uh, medium-ish sized cardboard boxes full of cassettes uh, but yes, for the last two and a half days, I have deliberately not looked inside of them to see what's in them so that I can show you my genuine reaction as I unbox the tapes here uh, on this video. Uh, yes, I, I do know that they were uh, about a third of the entire collection. I, I believe it's about 200 cassettes, uh, doing the rough math with what she described was in the lot. About 200 cassettes total, maybe a little bit more than that. About a third of that lot is uh, split between Christmas and country cassettes. So, you know, I'm, I'm not expecting to want to keep a whole bunch of that stuff, but you never know. I have gotten more fond of Christmas music in the last couple of years than I had been previously. So I've gotten a little fond of country as well. So, uh, but the rest of them, aside from glancing in the tops of the cardboard boxes, I don't know what's inside them. So yes, it was a long two and a half days avoiding peeking in the stuff because I want to actually uh, show my genuine reaction to, to see what's inside these. So um, this video hopefully will not be too horribly long because I mean, I'm mean i going to try and go through them kind of quickly just so that the video isn't too long, but it could end up being long or heavily edited. You, we don't know until I reach that stage. So sorry, but before we continue with the video, I need to insert this little clip in here because I realized as I was editing that uh, when I shot the main video at the time, I did not express and I had intended to express at the time uh, anywhere near to the degree how appreciative and thankful I was uh, to receive this load of cassettes. Uh, it's a much bigger load than I thought it was going to be. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just even before I knew what was in them, I was just immeasurably, almost indescribably thankful that she thought of me. And I, I even asked her how much she wanted for the cassettes and she said nothing. So that was even more of an amazing gesture. And so, yeah, I mean, even if I was only going to keep a tenth of what was in this load of tapes, it was just, and I think I expressed in the video how much fun it was going through them. And so, yeah, Sue, if you're watching, and I hope you are, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for these cassettes. It's uh, one, a wonderful gesture, and I don't know if I'll ever be able to repay it, but thank you so much. Yes, that uh, explanation is out of the way, so let's go ahead and get on into them. I'm going to go through the briefcase uh, caddies first, and they are all labeled Christmas tapes, so uh, obviously it's going to be mostly Christmas tapes. So I've got a table right here underneath, uh, right just underneath the camera range, so... Uh, yeah, we'll see. And the light might be a little bit harsh from one angle. It's just I don't have a lot of room to put the uh, the light. I was going to sit on my bed to do this, but the chair is more comfortable. So anyway, let's go ahead and peek in the first box of 
cassettes. And since I do it with the bargain bags, I'll just give you guys a quick little peeky of what's inside there before I even see it. You can freeze frame if you want to. And so let's see here. Oh, let's see. Songs of the Season. We got uh, yeah, just uh, various artist stuff mostly. Uh, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. That one's going to be a nice one. Bobby Vinton. I have never checked out Bobby Vinton before, so that'll be an interesting one. He has ice skates slung over his shoulder. Very Christmassy. Um, oh, Carol Burnett, Stephen Edie Gourmet, Andy Williams, Johnny Mathis, and others. Ooh, that one's going to be a nice one. Let's do it. I've always been a fan of Carol Burnett's comedy, you know, with uh, Harvey Korman, Tim Conway, and Vicki Lawrence, the, the sketch comedy show she did in the 70s, but I've never listened to an, any albums of hers, so that'll be interesting to hear some actual music of hers. And a piece of paper here. The Carpenters, nice one here. Frank Sinatra Christmas Collection. Uh, I, ha I have a Sinatra Christmas, I don't know, obviously I'm not going to take the time to read the track listings in this video, so... There will probably be some overlap with my Christmas CDs. Uh, the Temptations. Nice. There's some stuff in here that I will likely keep. Now the only problem with, uh, depending on how many of these cassettes I'm going to keep, is storage. I'm going to need to devise some storage solutions with, uh, yeah, because I don't have a lot of empty shelving in this room. Uh, we have Roger Williams, a uh, country artist I believe he is. A good housekeeping Christmas. So you can keep house while you're listening to this Christmas music, I guess. It's conducive to good housekeeping, apparently. Johnny Mathis. I love me some Johnny Mathis. Uh, Otmar Liebert. It's uh, New Age, I believe. Christy Lane. I have never heard of her. I'm going to guess she's country, but I have absolutely no idea. A Christmas to Remember. Stephen Eady, Andy Williams, it sounds like the, some of the same artists as that other one, but probably not a uh, repeat. Roger Whitaker, country artist. Bobby Sherman. Bobby Sherman, he was a teen idol back in the 60s, 70s, somewhere. Anne Murray. I've, I've always liked Anne Murray, so that'll be a nice addition to my collection. Christmas with the Morbin Tabernacle Choir, London Symphony Orchestra, Philadelphia Orchestra, the Ray Conniff Orchestra. That could be a good one. I've always appreciated the choral sound of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir and, uh, yeah. Nat King Cole. He's a merry old soul. A Christmas Presence. Easy listening jazz for Christmas. Another Roger Williams here. Perry Como and Roger Whitaker. A team up. And we have Eternal Sea Holiday Interludes. Another one of those New Age uh, atmospheric soundscape tapes. Well, that is the first box here. And we have the second Christmas tapes box here. Peekaboo I see cassettes. Well, you see cassettes first. I don't see them until now. Marty Robbins. There's another Marty that I can't remember. I confused the two. Yeah, this is not the Marty I was thinking of. And in Music Box Christmas, yeah. I have tried Music Box CDs before and they are incredibly boring, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'll listen to, I probably won't listen to every one of these tapes. But uh, we'll see how much of them I listen to. Elvis. This is not the original Elvis Christmas album. This is oh, 20 selections, including dialogue. That could be a little weird. Henry Mancini. This is probably going to be a keeper. I like Mancini. The Magic of Christmas. This is probably a various artists uh, compilation. Yeah, Tony Bennett, Bing Crosby, Johnny Mathis, Judy Garland. Yeah, that may be a keeper as well. Christmas Piano Dreams. And then A Christmas Party with the Stars. Uh, in this case, Barbara Streisand, Andy Williams, Johnny Mathis, Julie Andrews, Tony Bennett, Robert Goulet, Engelbert Humperdinck. Probably the artist whose name is the most fun to say. Engelbert Humperdinck. Happy Holidays, another compilation. Uh, Barbara Streisand, Percy Faith, Tony Bennett. 
apparently they they enjoy the the easy listening crooners and i don't blame them at all because they're fun to listen to happy holidays from true value hardware a Christmassy store if there ever there was one right there's uh, another looks like another oh it's a, a country compilation oh merry christmas with the supremes motown you pretty much can't go wrong with motown can you we have a Rhythm and Blues Christmas. We've got Al Green, Denise Williams, The OJs, Freddie Jackson. This could be an interesting one to listen to, too. I, I kind of sense that it will have a uh, another one of those 12 Days of Christmas uh, style videos that I did this past December uh, involving the tapes from this collection. So, Mannheim Steamroller. I think I have this one on CD, actually. And... Uh, Nature's Noel, Nature Quest. This probably sounds like one of those, another one of those uh, Nature Sounds tapes. Uh, Gary Lamb, instrumental Christmas music. Never heard of Gary Lamb. And then we have oh, a, a solo Engelbert Christmas album. And another uh, another Mannheim Steamroller Christmas tape. These boxes are actually in relatively fair condition. Gotta say, Christmas Disco. That could be interesting to listen to. And uh, another Roger Williams, Golden Christmas with Roger Williams. Duke Ellington, not bad at all. And then we have a compilation, an easy listening compilation, Sounds of the Holiday Season. Uh, Sally Harmon, Let It Snow. I've never heard of Sally Harmon. Wayne Newton, Christmas Songs. Some interesting stuff in here. Even if it's stuff that I'm probably not going to keep, some of it I think I'm probably going to have to listen to. And Freddie Fender. A Christmas CD by Freddie Fender. And that is the second box. Now we're down to <clears throat> the third box. It's going to get more interesting after the Christmas tapes are done with, just because I, it's going to be um, a melange of genres. And here you go, peekabooing at this box here. Another Johnny Mathis Christmas tape. Gladys Knight and the Pips. I may be keeping quite a few of these. And uh, Jimmy Rogers Christmas right here. And oh, here is, the, I think this is the, the actual Elvis Christmas album, the one that he did back in the 50s. That other one that I showed was, it looked like a compilation. Christmas Alive, 1990. Western Baptist College in Salem, Oregon, so it's a local uh, regional thing. Then we have Kathy Lee Gifford. Some people like Kathy Lee. I'm pretty neutral on her. And we have a a Courier and Ives Christmas. Uh, don't, maybe instrumentals. I don't see any artists in the track listing. And then another, another Nature Christmas thing. The Nature ones I'm probably going to be getting rid of without listening to them, but then we have Mannheim Steamroller. Oh, a Christmas tribute to Mannheim Steamroller, so it's not actually Mannheim Steamroller. Then North Sound, Harmonizing Nature with Music, Christmas Sleigh Ride, and yet another nature tape, and another Mannheim Steamroller tape. This is a genuine Mannheim Steamroller, steamroller tape. The other one was a tribute. And oh, a Billboard compilation, Billboard Christmas hits uh, 1955 to present. Oh, and then we have Barbara Streisand. I think I have this one on CD, though. So. Oh, here we go. Let's rock. John Tesh. Eh, I don't know. And Christmas with Kenny Rogers. Oh, The Jingle Cats. Meowy Christmas. Not sure if that one will be a keeper or not. And Richard Claterman. He is a pianist. Uh, classical-ish pianist, so that might be interesting. Ooh, Dave Cause Christmas album. I, I've, I've got a few of Dave Cause's CDs, so yeah. This one will likely be a keeper. And then Neil Diamond's Christmas album volume two. Floyd Kramer and another classical pianist, or easy listening pianist. Yeah. Another Johnny Mathis tape. Christmas Eve with Johnny Mathis. I might be keeping more of these Christmas tapes than I thought I was going to. Christmas wishes from Kenny Rogers. So yeah, 
not a bad little selection of Christmas tapes. So yes, that takes care of the the three Christmas briefcase style caddies. So, okay, let's go ahead and start with the smallest of the three boxes. They don't vary much in size. The boxes don't, but uh, they do enough to distinguish smaller from larger. So let's go ahead and get started with this box. I mean, I mean, they are stacked in here, so you can't really see what's in here. I can't give you a good peekaboo, because so I'll just have to go through them as uh, and show them to you as I go through them. This we here we have a blank tape, so very useful, and another blank tape. We have. Monster Hits Volume 1. Oh, it's a, a Halloween compilation, so that could be cool. I don't actually have any Halloween CDs, so this will be a fun little thing. And oh, this one is still sealed. It is the very best of Mozart. I may keep that one as well, so we'll see. Uh, Roger Whittaker from the heart. I believe Roger Whittaker is a country artist. So. And Tom Grant. Edge of the World. I'm not sure who Tom Grant is, so it'll be interesting to... Verve Records, so it's uh, probably a jazz uh, album. We have... It just says cinema, so I don't know what this is, actually. And that could be something interesting, too. I'll just be listening to some of these, having no idea what they are. So. And then we have the soundtrack from the jazz singer, uh, Neil Diamond. I have actually never seen that movie. I've even, not even seen the original version of The Jazz Singer. And uh, so I've, I'm not familiar with the movie or the music at all. So. Feelings. Nothing more than feelings. It's, a, it's a, a, an easy listening interpretations, instrumental probably interpretations of pop songs, that kind of thing. John Nilsson, Twelve Shades of Light. I'm going to guess that's kind of an instrumental type of thing. This, in a way, this is kind of like the bargain bags, because, you know, a lot of stuff that I don't recognize and will be curious to listen to. And uh, Richard Claterman, another one of his albums, a non-Christmas album by Richard Claterman, pianist. Yeah. As Time Goes By, by Ned Spurlock. Oh yeah, that Ned Spurlock. I don't know who Ned Spurlock is. It's a little joke, you know. We have Paul Anka, My Way. His way or the highway. And we have oh, this guy, uh, Chris Spheris. This guy, I think I had one of his CDs a while ago. Uh, new age uh, instrumental jazz-ish kind of an artist. And I'll be interested to hear that one. Tom Grant, Night Charade, a landscape format uh, cover of a cassette. You don't see that all that often. And this is also a, on the Verve label, so it must also be a jazz. We have a, a naked cassette. It's naked. Um, the Wyndham Hill Group, Tranquility. I'll see if its box is somewhere in one of these cartons. Andrew Lloyd Webber, uh, Love Songs from the Shows, uh, um, re-recordings of Andrew Lloyd Webber stuff. The Natural Piano. They were fans of the uh, nature tapes stuff, and, and some people are, actually. I have a friend at work who, I don't think she has a cassette player, though, but she likes, she loves to relax to those nature CDs, but, uh, I mean, I'll see if she has a cassette player. Not a lot of people do anymore, so if she does, these will go to her, and including this one, uh, The Best of Nature Quest, Volume 1. And then we have, oh, Hooked on Themes. This was, you know, the, the, the Hooked on Classics uh, series of tapes. And, and albums back in the 70s and 80s. And, oh, this is oh this is a cute little box. And it is Sounds of the Sea. It is a nature set of tapes. So, And it, it's actual wood. It's a real wood box. It's not plastic or anything. So kind of cool, nifty little whatchamacallit. Actually, I think I need to put some of the stuff back in the box because this table is not huge. So The Lion King soundtrack. Another movie I have never seen. The list of movies that I have never seen is embarrassingly long. Trust me. Uh, Somewhere in Time, a uh, uh, instrumental re-recordings of classic, I uh, probably great American songbook songs. We have Stage Door Canteen, Heartland Music presents. I think this is, uh, yeah, I think it's re-recordings of old stuff. And 
Lasting Impressions. I have no idea what this is. Oh, it's it's kind of a new age thing. Maybe not necessarily a relaxation tape, but you know, it's relaxing music probably. We have The Sea, another one of those uh, tapes. Yeah. Oh, Dionne Warwick. Now we're talking. And yeah, just a whole bunch of a big melange of all sorts of stuff in here. Uh, Horowitz, classical. Horowitz Encores, and then we have another one of those uh, hooked on uh, things, hooked on instrumentals. I might keep these hooked on ones because they, they were kind of fun, kitschy stuff. And oh, Julio Iglesias, uh, the, his album Julio. Never afraid to listen to Julio Iglesias or The Platters. Classic 50s stuff. Oh, Barbara Streisand, the Broadway album. It'll be interesting to find out uh, ultimately how many of these I actually end up keeping. Uh, this will probably not be one of them. <laughs> Lovin' and Dreamin', just one of those uh, easy listening com uh, compilations. And this one is a, in a plain box. It does not have a slip in it. Um, Sessions presents 40 Original Hits Part 1. And then we have Sergio Mendez, uh, self-titled. Won't mind listening to Sergio Mendes. And we have Swingin' 60s. Swingin' 60s. I have to do the swingin' thing with my head. Cappuccino Afternoon. Obviously this is a tape uh, suitable for when it's afternoon and you're sipping on a cappuccino. I would presume. And we have the Everly Brothers, 24 original classics. Another group you, in my opinion, pretty much can't go wrong with is the Everly Brothers. Come on. Oh, <laughs> you know, I think I had this a long time ago on, I think it was a, a CD, Rhythm of the Night. This is just one of those, um, and a few things that I've gone through lately have had this preview window on here telling you what the music is like. It's just kind of um, unnamed instrumental artists just doing basic jazz stuff, kind of standard. Just the stuff that you've just put on background music, music, more than music, really. Let your feet walk to the beat. An exercise tape, obviously. Yep, and, and made with specific beats per minute for exercising. So, back when you cassette Walkmans were plentiful. And another, this looks like, yeah, this is another volume in these sessions. Uh, 40 original hits series uh, in a plain box like the other one was. Quite an interesting melange of titles in here. Pardon me while I put these back in the box and make room for the next box. Let's move on to the next box. This is the medium sized box or the mama bear box. Actually, this is, you can almost see the box. It's so tall that the camera can see it through there, yeah. Again, can't really do a peekaboo with the box. So we'll take a look at what's inside it. This is almost too tall a box for me to actually look inside. I might, I might alter my scheme here. I might actually put it on the floor. Uh, but here we have, yeah, she said she was going to enclose these. These are books on tape by Patrick F. McManus. I will not be keeping those. Oh, I guess it kind of tells you what genre they are. Humor, comedy, etc., etc. And yeah, I'm going to put this on the floor. So it'll be easier to... Uh, put the contents on the on my shoulders don't need that much of a workout and then we have a cassette in half a case this is Kenny G's greatest hits it doesn't have the back of the case so the tape is kind of loose. but Kenny G I have a few Kenny G uh, albums on CD so and another one breathless we have Barbara Mandrell Christmas so we're, we're not done with the Christmas tapes yet and another Kenny G album, Silhouette. I think I have one or both of these on already on cassette, actually. They were at the, on the freebie shelf at House of Records. So I picked them up. And this one... Oh, this, this looks familiar, although it actually does not have a tape in it. It is an empty case. But Aaron Nelville's Soulful Christmas. I showed that one in my 12 Days of Christmas. So I will put the box back in. And we have another empty box. Kenny G Miracles Christmas album. I already have that one on CD. So I'll put the empty boxes aside and see if the tapes actually turn up. 
Winterlude, an instrumental Christmas album. A homemade tape, Jim Reeves Christmas. Now it's nice not to have the box on here so I can actually sort stuff out. Uh, Jim Reeves, 12 Songs of Christmas. Uh, Christmas Swing. That one could be interesting to listen to. Another homemade tape here, um, Joy to the World. I'm going to put the home copied tapes on uh, out of the way here. Narvel Feltz. I have never heard of him before in my life. ABC Dot Records. I believe the ABC and Dot labels were from the 70s. So. Never heard of Narvel Feltz in my life. Can you blame me? Anyway, <laughs> Mannheim Steamroller Christmas. Uh, or Christmas in the Air by Mannheim. A Billboard Christmas tape. Might, that one might be a keeper. We have Jim Reeves Collector Series. Uh, he's, I believe he's a country artist. I'll, I might have to listen to his stuff. Lady of the Lake by Gary Jess. Probably New Age. And another Dust Bunny. I'm going to have to vacuum when I'm done with this. And another Gary Jess. Actually, looks like these have been... Uh, the, both of these Gary Jess tapes were autographed by Gary Jess. I guess if they were autographed by somebody else, it wouldn't really work. And Shadow Dancing by Gary Jess. I don't know who Gary Jess is, but apparently they were fans of them. Uh, him. Oh, Best of the Righteous Brothers. Nice. And Christmas with Ronnie Millsap. I may have to, even if I don't plan on keeping some of these tapes, I might just have to listen to them out of total curiosity. Because you never know, like with Bargain Bag, you never know, I never know if I'm going to like something that looks totally inconspicuous or whatever. And so, but uh, Benny King, I love Benny King, oh, with with and without the Drifters. This, uh, that's going to be a good compilation. We have Dinner Music by the Romantic Saxophone Quintet. Forging ahead, we have <clears throat> Alabama with The Touch. I've never listened to Alabama, the group. So, Eddie Rabbit, number ones. This has got to have I, I Love a Rainy Night. That's his, his biggest hit. We have, oh, this one is rather weathered. Look at the uh, yes, interesting uh, box. The box is opaque, blue, and the cover is just a label, which is very, very frayed. Uh, Donna Fargo, All About a Feeling. She was on the same label, incidentally, as Narvel Feltz. But I think I had heard of Donna Fargo before. Oh, and we have another one that's got the weathered label. And this is somebody I have heard of before, Roy Clark. Hmm. Uh, Don Williams, Greatest Hits. Uh, Floyd Kramer, I think I might actually have or had this one. This was in on CD in my sister's collection, or The Piano Magic of Floyd Kramer. We have Jim Reeves, Welcome to My World. Another Alabama tape, uh, Roll On, and another Alabama, The Closer You Get. Oh, The Magic of Chet Atkins. This one might be a keeper. I do like Chet Atkins. Or, I have li listened to some Chet Atkins, not a whole lot. But, uh, uh, another Ronnie Millsap tape here. So yeah, she, she wasn't kidding. There's a lot of country in here. Uh, Barbara Mandrell. Another Eddie Rabbit here. And an Alabama Christmas. So, another Flo Floyd Kramer tape. And another Floyd Kramer tape. Gobs of Floyd Kramer. We have John Conley, another country artist. We have 36 original country hits. And we've got a Ricky Skaggs. Uh, Don't cheat in our hometown. Oh, hey, another Marvel Feltz. Excuse me, Narvel Feltz. Excuse me. And we have uh, Crystal Gale. I have never checked out her music. Not to. Then we have another one of those uh, opaque box tapes, but as you can see, it's so worn out that the label plum fell right off. Have, oh, boy. And the label on the tape itself is not in good shape. Loretta Lynn, You Ain't Woman Enough. 
you know, the conditions of some of these tapes, that's going to be something else. Is, uh, that one doesn't look very good, so I'm probably not even going to try playing that one. Because, you know, some, some of these tapes are in really good condition. Some of them eh, have seen better days. But uh, anyway, Eddie Rabbit. Oh, Dr. Hook. Uh, I've, I've, I've got a Best of Dr. Hook. Uh, CD, so it'll be interesting to listen to that one. Mm. Gosh, we're only a little little over halfway done with this box. A lot of stuff in here. Another Barbara Mandrell. And a Marty Robbins. Uh, this is the second Marty Robbins tape, I believe. This is his biggest hits. I'll probably, at the very least, listen to all of the greatest hits tapes that are in this collection. Uh, even the country ones that I'm not particularly drawn to just to see what's out there. You know, you it never hurts to listen to something, you know. You never know what you're going to find that's going to be fun. Uh, we have Ronnie Millsap here. And this, I think this is a second copy of this. She said there were going to be some redundancies in this set. They, because like they had one copy for the house and one copy for the car. So, so yeah, this is Jim Reeves. I've, I've seen this one in the box, one of the boxes somewhere. 20 of Country's Best, a country compilation. The various artist country compilations I probably will not bother with, but then we have another Floyd Kramer, Floyd Kramer Originals. Actually, I did not know he made any had any original compositions. I always thought he just played other people's songs, so I may listen to that one. Good Country Volume Two, and here we have Barbara Mandrell's Greatest Hits. So I will probably listen to that one. Careful not to let the boxes fall down. And we have another one, Al Alabama's Greatest Hits. I've got a pretty, probably a pretty good hunk of Alabama's discography. Actually, maybe not. They, they're probably one of those bands that's made 45 albums, and if I only got like five of them, that's not much. But maybe. Lee Greenwood with his album Streamline. I kind of like the way that when they do the landscape versions of the cover cover art on C on the cassette cases. We have Sylvia. I have never heard of her. I don't know if she's a country artist or a pop artist or what. Hmm. And yet another Narvel Feltz album. At this rate, I may end up having the entire Narvel Feltz discography. Lucky me. If I put one of his tapes in, I might end up loving it. Who knows? It's, it's just, you got to admit, the name Narvel Feltz sounds funny. Roy Orbison. If I didn't have his two-disc Essential series, I would probably keep this one. Uh, and, well, and, and I, I still might. I mean, just having something on cassette as well as CD... Would be, could be fun. The best of Mickey Gilly, another country artist, and another Roy Orbison. It looks like this is an album, King of Hearts. That could be fun to listen to. And then yet another Ronnie Millsap album. Uh, one more try for love. The best of B.J. Thomas. I've kind of been curious to listen to him, and I think I believe it's B.J. Thomas that over at House of Records. They have like five or six or seven of his albums in the one dollar section. And I've always been curious, I've never picked one up. So maybe this will give me a taste of him. And if I love him, I can just go to House of Records and clean him out of their one dollar LPs. And then uh, this looks like, an, I think this is another uh, duplicate tape of the, uh, the Magic of Chet Atkins. And Freddie Fender Greatest Hits, Ronnie Millsap Heart and Soul several Ronnie Millsap tapes in here, and several country compilations, Country's Greatest Hits, Volume 5. And we have Earl Thomas Conley, his Greatest Hits album. And then another one of these, these are so weird, these, these opaque boxes uh, with the rather frayed labels, uh, Bobby Goldsboro and his album Today. Oh, now we're talking Tony Orlando and Dawn. This is, yeah, they, they were a, a 70s group uh, disco. I think they could be classified as disco. But yeah, they, they were the butt of a lot of jokes and probably unjustifiably so. Yeah. Still. Oh, another Roy Orbison compilation in Dreams. And we have John Conley with Love. Coming down to the end of this second of three boxes. In a way, I can't believe I'm already almost all the way through this whole lot. Eddie Rabbit, I Want to Dance with You. And we have Kenny Rogers' Greatest Hits. I have 
his two disc uh, hits CD, so I don't know if I'll be keeping this one. Ooh, this one I might. Uh, this one I might keep. Charlie Pride Greatest Hits. I've been wanting to delve a bit into Charlie Pride, so. Yeah. And I actually don't have any of his stuff, at all in any format yet. And we have Dolly Parton Collector Series. I do have a Dolly Parton compilation, but we'll see how much overlap is on that CD versus this tape. We have the best of the Stetler Brothers. Uh, Johnny Rivers Golden Hits. And Conway Twitty. It's only make believe. Well, that's it for that box. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I have just been having so much fun with this unboxing, and I can't believe we're down to the last box. Yeah, it's the biggest of the boxes, so it'll take the longest to open up. But still, yeah, it's just I, this has gone by way too quickly, in my opinion. I've just been having a lot of fun with this. The entire top of this box is Yanni cassettes, and she said there's just probably 20 or so Yanni tapes in here. And as she explained before, there's uh, some duplicates. She They had one for the house and one for the car or, or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, if, if uh, I have any Yanni cassettes that uh, I have duplicates of that you guys might want, <laughs> don't go flooding my inbox with messages now. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Yes, this, this first little lot of these is going to be mostly, if not entirely, Yanni. Uh, Nightbird, which I believe is one of his, yeah, it's a collection. And then, oh, this is my favorite Yanni album. Nikki Nana is the name of it, and uh, <clears throat> if you try out one Yanni album, I would recommend this one. It's got uh, a bit more, a bit of a uh, more of a pop feel, and uh, one or two of the songs actually have lyrics in them, so they're kind of like songs. Uh, the, the title track Nikki Nana is it almost has kind of a gospel feel to it. It's just hugely uplifting and soaring. It is not the snooze fest Yanni music that that he's was was well known for in his later years. Uh, his earlier stuff like that had life to it. So check out Nikki Nana. And we have another compilation, Love Songs. Uh, Enchantment, which I believe is yet another Yanni compilation. And I think this is a, a Christmas album-ish. Uh, Snowfall. It's all original tunes, but... Yeah. And, uh, oh, here we go. Solo piano interpretations of Yanni. So yes, not only a compilation, but a compilation of Yanni, Yanni music not done by Yanni himself. And, and this is actually the album that got me started being a Yanni fan. Uh, Chameleon Days is, this, is the name of this album. And it has a track on it that I heard on a... It was a New Age radio station down in Southern California that was running at the time. It's a song called Everglade Run. And that one just... That just grabbed my ear like you wouldn't believe. And that made me a Yanni fan. At least, as I said, a fan of his earlier stuff. We have one of his earliest album, Keys to Imagination. This was a good one. One of the albums that I just talked about that, that had life to it, as opposed to his later music. Uh, Sanctuary. I have never heard of that one. That might be a compilation. We have Reflections of Passion. This, I think this is a, well, a comp, part of a comp, partly a compilation. has some original songs on it. And then we have an empty... Oh, I have a naked cassette here. Is that this one? The label is so worn off that I can't tell. Oh, Reflections of Passion. But yes, an empty Yanni box in my time. I'll put that one aside. If it ends up... And then we have a duplicate of Nikki Nana. And we have another one of his earlier albums, Optimistique. That one's pretty good. Cool. A collection of romantic themes by Yanni, compilation, and Keys to Imagination. Yes, this is a duplicate. There was already one in here. She wasn't kidding. There was lots of Yanni in here. We have Dare to Dream. This is, I believe, another compilation from his later years that was not all that great. And we have not one but two copies of Out of Silence, one of his, another one of his earlier albums. And we have Dare to Dream, which I believe is another, yep, another duplicate. Yes, this uh, mismatched box and tape may end up continuing to be mismatched. And we have In Celebration of Life. This was another Yanni compilation. So Yanni was fond of the compilations. That is the Yanni tapes, at least for now. Put those aside. Black and White Encore by Danny Wright. I don't know who that is. 
And now we're down into the miscellaneous stuff. We have quiet music for quiet listening. This looks like another uh, nature-ish type tape. Ooh, another Henry Mancini compilation. You can never have too many of those, in, in my opinion. Pure Gold is the name of this one. We have a Neil Diamond, his 12 greatest hits. This one looks a little bit weathered, so oh yeah. I probably won't risk. Some of these tapes, as much as I want to listen to them, uh, if their condition is any indication, I probably will not risk playing them in my player just to make sure uh, the player doesn't get damaged. So I, I want this tape player to last as long as I can make it last, especially with this bounty of cassettes. Then we have Great Love Songs of the 50s and 60s. So, and then another Righteous another righteous Brothers? Or did I have a Righteous Brothers compilation until now? I can't. Yes, I do. Uh, yeah. Soul and Inspiration. At least I assume it's a compilation. It could be just a regular album. We have Romantic Interludes, A Love Like Ours. Hey, you know, like I say, life is too short to be a music snob. I will not make fun of anyone's music collection. Uh, the Many Moods of Henry Mancini. There we go. Yes, something that's uh, it's kind of a, a running joke with me when when I bring the subject up, I guess, is if I ever visit you at your house, one of the first things I'm going to do is look through your music collection. Not to judge, and not to try and steal anything, and not to ask you if I can buy anything off you. Just out of total curiosity. I'm just I'm just interested in, you know, it's like my eyes are drawn towards, you know, CDs or records or, or cassettes if you have them. So, yeah. If I ever visit your home, just don't be surprised if I make a make a beeline to your albums and just start looking through them. Oh, Neil Sadaka. I don't think I have any of... No, I don't have any of his stuff in any format. And I've been curious to listen to him. So. And then a classical album. Uh, Horowitz plays Mozart. Vladimir Horowitz is a uh, notable pianist? Or is he a conductor? <laughs> That's how much I know about him. <laughs> um, we have Ned Spurlock. I think I think I, there was another Ned Spurlock tape in here, wasn't there? Uh, yesterday, songs from the 1960s played on Hammer Dulcimer. I'll probably listen to it. See what I mean? I'm not exactly sure what a Hammer Dulcimer is, so I may end up loving it. Uh, John Nilsson, Night Garden, autographed by John Nilsson. Oh. Kind of cool that they got to meet some of the artists that they uh, whose tapes they have uh, through the years. Sight Unseen. Jazz Cafe. It's another one of those. The jazz tape that I pointed out that I had on CD a few minutes ago. It's another one in that series. We have yet another Richard Claderman. Uh, the cover looks familiar, so this might be a duplicate. And uh, Sentimental Journey by Kelly Stewart. A piano covers album, probably. Yeah. Uh, great American Songbook stuff, and, yeah. Smoke Gets in Your Eyes, Sentimental Journey, Danny Boy, Stormy Weather, etc., etc. There isn't a song on here called etc., etc. That's just my uh, expounding on that. Oh, Track of the Cat by Dionne Warwick. It's an interesting album cover. So, hmm. Reelin' and Rockin' 50s. Cool. Yeah, pretty much everything that's by well-known artists I'm probably going to at least listen to, assuming, as I said, that the tapes are in good condition. That's going to be a determining factor in a lot of the stuff. So, Movie themes of the 80s. You know, I think I might have actually had this tape, not this exact tape, but this uh, album on tape before. Oh, and then we have the Captain and Tennille's Greatest Hits. I have their uh, uh, CD compilation of theirs, so I don't know if I'll keep that one, but... Uh, and then 20 Greatest Love Songs of the 50s and 60s. And gosh, still plenty more to go in this box. Oh, a Herb Alpert album. Keep Your Eye on Me. I am definitely going to keep and listen to or Well, at least listen to it. Probably keep it. And Teardrop Time. Looks like a 50s compilation of pop hits. And then another... This looks like we've got a little bunch of those here. A Senior Prom, another compilation. And remembering the 60s, we have Music for the Millions by Roger Whittaker. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, nature Quest, Piano Impressions. Yeah, all, the, all these Nature Quest tapes are probably going to go straight into the uh, Goodwill. I don't see any... <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is failing me. Another Richard Claderman. 
unless it's Kleiderman and I'm mispronouncing it. I have no idea. Well, then we have, ooh, I'll probably end up keeping this one. It's a two tape set of Sam Cooke, The Man and His Music, tape one and tape two. Yeah. That one's probably gonna be a keeper. And we have original rock and roll, various artists. Oldies Greatest Hits, lots of compilations in here. And another Ned Spurlock, uh, I'll Be Seeing You. You can't have too, many, too much Ned Spurlock in your collection, right? And then we have Bobby Vinton's Greatest Hits. I'm oh, interested in checking out. I don't think I've checked any of, out, any of his stuff out. And then Autumn in New England. This is probably another... Uh... Oh, it looks like this is going to be a four-tape set because this is tape four of Remembering the 60s. So I will keep a separate stack of those because I will presume that tapes two and three are forthcoming in the box. And we have Engelbert Humperdinck, another... Another Engelbert album. Oh, and Percy Sledge. This is another artist that I have never really checked out before. So. Oh, and here is tape three of Remembering the 60s. See, told you, they were hot on each other's heels. Roger Whitaker, Evergreens. And, oh, Girl Groups. Oh, various artists, selections from the soundtrack of Girl Groups, a, The Story of a Sound. So obviously it was a documentary I would assume. So. And, uh, yeah, here we are. Tape two of Remembering the 60s. The full set is here. And, oh, I've got a... Oh, <laughs> another Yanni tape without a box, but it is not. it does not belong to the empty box that's here. So now we have two mismatched tapes and one empty box that it doesn't belong to either of the two naked tapes. It's like a big jigsaw puzzle. Oh, uh, Nature Quest, another Nature Quest tape. And John Tesh, Avalon. I listened to one John Tesh uh, album way back when he first started making music and it was okay didn't wasn't hugely great shakes with me but la grand grand storia del rock the string alongs the cow cells oh printed and manufactured in italy so hmm. oh, that's right i think he was uh he served in the military so i think he was uh, overseas a lot so he probably picked that up in italy so. and barbara streisand's greatest hits i have her two disc essential a CD compilation, so I may not keep that, keep this, but I might. And another John Tesh, Winter Song. And then we have Sonic Spectaculars from Longwood. Oh, the Majestic Pipe Organ at Longwood Gardens. Oh, that's, that's what Longwood is. Hmm? Might listen to that. I, I, I kind of like Pipe Organ, but I'm pretty picky about what Pipe Organ albums I listen to. And then another Romantic Interludes album, Slow Dance. Kenny G, Six of Hearts. That's, no, I've never heard of that album. Oh, it's it's an, an EP, basically. Yeah, three songs on each side. So, hence the title, Six of Hearts. And, oh, yeah, another, another empty t box, uh, The Best of Enya, which I have. No, I have Enya albums. I used to have The Best of Enya, this album on CD, but I... I upgraded to her individual albums. We have oh, Senior Prom. This is another Senior Prom. Oh, that, that was tape one. This is tape two of Senior Prom. So, two. And then uh, the John Tesh Project, Sax on the Beach. Racy. We have, oh, I see another Senior Prom. So it's, it's another multi-tape set. And then the, the best of Bert Camfort. I believe he is a pianist, if I remember correctly. Another Nature Quest, Twilight Jazz. Uh, yes, this is the next senior prom tape. This is tape three. So I am still waiting for to see tape. Tape four, if there is one. It may have been a three tape set. It doesn't tell me. And then another Kenny G album, Duotones. I may end up building a pretty respectable Kenny G discography on tape. Or would that be a tapeography? And uh, Northern Lights, another Nature Quest tape. And we're coming down to the last dozen or so tapes in here. This has been fun. I just want this to go on forever. But then I wouldn't have room to play it, put it all. Uh, Elvis Volume 1, a legendary performer. And uh, John Tesh, live at Red Rocks with the Colorado Symphony Orchestra. This one I might keep because I actually have Yanni's Live at the Acropolis on CD. So, well, 
It's at, at the very least I will listen to it. And then uh, Monterey Nights by John Tesh. One thing I like about John Tesh is that he is a Star Trek fan. And he actually made a cameo appearance uncredited as a Klingon in a Star Trek The Next Generation episode. Trivia note. And The Drifters, Golden Hits. God, I love The Drifters. Uh, David Houston, whom I have never heard of. Wonders of the Wine. Oh, Brookman. <clears throat> I have, or, or do I have a, I think I might have a CD of his greatest hits. But yeah, Brooke Benton. It's just a matter of time, his greatest hits. And another John Tesh. Uh, music, in the key, music in the Key of Love. And then an Anne Murray Christmas album. Is this the same one that was in one of the suitcases? I can't remember. Anyways. We're coming down to the last few tapes. I don't want this to end. Oh, music from the television series Northern Exposure. I never watched the show. But uh, I think this, this album was a pretty respectable hit on the charts, as I recall. And uh, Barbara Mandrell, Midnight Angel. Oh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I have four volumes of this on CD, but this is volume 18. So yeah, I only have the first four volumes. So. Giovanni Maradi. Promises. I've never heard of Giovanni Maradi before. This may have been a... Uh, oh, actually, it's an... Uh, the label is a Canadian label, so... I was just assuming that it would have been an Italian label. And then... The last few tapes here... Such a sad thing. Johnny Mathis, Heavenly... I actually think I have this one on LP. But I may end up keeping the tape. And... Oh, Mount St. Helens, A Mountain Story, it says. This is one by Gary Jess, who's a uh, few of his albums were in here. So I don't know if this is A Mountain Story colloquially, or if it actually is spoken word, partly. We have Barbara Streisand, A Collection, Greatest Hits and More. Uh, another one in a half a box, because the, uh, the other half of the boxes disappeared. Oh, The Best of the Ventures. That's going to be a cool one to listen to. Although I, I do have Adventures compilations on CD as well. And the last tape, sad face. Uh, we have a, looks like a nature tape again. Col uh, Sweet for the Columbia Gorge by J. Mo J. Michael Kiersey. So, my goodness, that was fun. I love this. I want like six more boxes of cassettes. Send me some. No. Um, <laughs> Yeah, this was a lot of fun. I'm going to have so much fun. Hi, it's me again. Before I close out the video here, I thought I would just come back and give you a quick little update. Uh, today is the day after I filmed the main part of the video, so I've had a little bit of a time to familiarize myself with the collection. Now, after filming yesterday, I went through all the tapes to make sure that they were in the right cases with the correct insert cards, and they all were. And here is a picture that I thought you might like to see of the full lot of cassettes uh, laid out on my bed here. It turns out there were 308 cassettes in total, so about 100 more than I thought there were. And uh, five of the cassettes were blank or home recorded tapes, and six of them were duplicate titles. There were actually six titles that there were two copies of. And so that nets out to 297 unique pre-recorded cassettes. And that is actually, by the way, counting each tape in multi-tape sets. You know, there was one set of four tapes, there was one set of three tapes, and there were two or three sets of two tapes each. So yes, that 297 number is counting each individual tape in those sets. And uh, there were actually three tapes that didn't have cases, and there were also four cases or cards without tapes to go with them. So. And uh, there were actually no matches between them, which I kind of found hilarious in itself. And uh, now I've begun the process of going through the tapes in a little bit more detail. I've started sorting them by genre. Uh, there were five books on tape and about 19 or so of those Nature Sounds tapes. And those things I have absolutely no interest in even listening to. So those are probably just going to go straight into the Goodwill pile. And I will probably be eliminating several more, like the more mundane and weird uh, compilations and probably most of the country compilations. I'm probably going to have no interest in listening to those. 
And as I sort them, I've also been checking them for playability, obviously. Uh, some of the shells of some of the cassettes were rather dirty, so I've been gently cleaning them with a rag with just a light spray of Windex on them to get all the dirt off of them uh, as I go. And I did find one tape that was actually broken. I mean, the, the tape literally was snapped in half, so it would... Yeah, that one had to go into the trash. That was one of the Barbara Mandrell tapes, as I recall. And I've also been using my portable cassette player here to wind and rewind each tape to make sure that its movement appears to be smooth. So, you know, that the last thing that you want to do is to have a, a loose or wrinkled tape get tangled into the machine and, and break, uh, risk breaking the machine as well. So Now, I do fully expect to find several more tapes in the lot that will be of questionable enough condition uh, that I won't want to try playing the tapes. Uh, you know, some of them have, uh, I noticed one or two of them have the missing pressure pad. That little felt pad that uh, you'll see inside the tape, it can affect the playability of the tape if that pressure pad is missing. And also some of the uh, cassette shells have paper labels that are bubbled or flaking or peeling off. And obviously I'd rather not have any debris falling off into my tape deck if I can prevent it. So there you go. But uh, even with all of these steps in my vetting process, I still expect to end up with uh, around 250 tapes, cassettes, that I will be listening to and hopefully enjoying over the coming months. So there you go. It's been a lot of fun, and it's continuing to be a lot of fun. Uh, and and I'm, I've been worried about uh, <clears throat> having a uh, steady stream of content for my playlist videos, because you've noticed that I've gone to was it two or three months without doing a playlist video? But that will be coming back, I, I promise you. But yes, this will give me uh, material to do playlist videos. Uh, yeah, and as I said, another 12, uh, 12 tapes of Christmas coming up in December. Yes, the, the Christmas tapes I'm going to have set aside. I'm not going to listen to those until after Thanksgiving, which is when I usually uh, start listening to Christmas music because I'm not in the mood to do so until then. But gosh, this has been fun. I hope you guys had as much fun watching this as I did opening all these. There I go with my arms again. But anyway, before I go on and make this video much longer than it needs to be, uh, that'll do it for this major super cassette unboxing video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.